spot a comic in a place like this, eh? All you gotta do is look for someone who obviously needs therapy, can't afford it, and is in the back of the room screaming in their notebook. Because <laughs> comedy is a lot like riding a bike. If you fall off, it hurts. It's a lot like sex, because if you get paid for it, you're a prostitute. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you a little story. I only got five minutes. Folks, swear to God, heart to God, and to God, this is a true story. I was in this little town, a little town called Valley View in northern Alberta, Bama. <laughs> I don't know if you know this kind of town, but it's the kind of town that the moment you drive into it, if you listen carefully, you can hear a banjo. <laughs> the people will stop digging whatever holes they're digging in their yard, and a three-legged dog will chase you. So I'm stranded in this in this little town. And why is none of your goddamn business? Just mind your business. Okay? It's not great to the situation. So I'm stuck in this town. 6 a.m. I go for breakfast in the only hotel. I go for breakfast, man. I don't care. If you're cooking breakfast in Canada, you better know how to make hash browns. I'm not talking about the eggs. I'm not talking about the sausages. The hash browns. They come. I got three potatoes. They're like the size of softballs. They look like someone dumped them in boiling water, slapped them around on the grill, and put them on my plate. I finally managed to bust one open. It's raw in the center. The waitress comes over. I'm there sitting staring at it. The waitress comes over. God bless her little heart, but she had one of these crazy little eyes that's all over the place. It's like she was, I don't know, a spastic chameleon trying to track a drunk dragonfly. <laughs> it was kind of disconcerting. And she asked me, she said, is everything okay? I said, no, look at this. The potatoes, they're raw in the center. She said, oh, that's how the cook cooks them. I said, darling, when your end product is raw, you have no right using the word cook either as a noun or a verb. <laughs> it's not cooked, no one cooked them. Oh, well, that's how the cook cooks them. I said, well, I can't eat it. Well, that's how the cook cooks them. I said, well, this is how the customer doesn't pay for them. Take them away and take them off my bill. She looked at me like I had just asked her to squash a litter of puppies with a fridge. <laughs> she was like, I can't do that. I said, why not? She said, I punch a button, the bill comes up, I have to charge you what's on the bill. I said, okay, I think I can help you with that. How much would a side of potatoes be? Oh, that's a dollar fifty. Okay, how much is my large milk? That's a dollar fifty. I said, take away the potatoes, don't charge me for the milk. And she said, how can you have milk and not pay for it? I said, because of the potatoes. Then she won the argument. She said, milk ain't potatoes. I had absolutely no response to that episode. I said, why do you even bother coming over and asking me, is everything okay? If there's absolutely nothing you can do about it when it's not. I thought I broke her. She just wandered off. She goes, talks to the manager, comes back. Would you like to fill out a complaint form? I look over, there's two cooks, two wait staff, the manager. They're all staring at me. There's no other customers in the place. They're all looking at me. Oh, they can't cook potatoes, but they've got complaint forms all ready for me. I said, you better bring me two. She brought me the complaint forms. I put my potatoes in it. I wrapped it up. I said, you put this on the manager's desk. So I leave. I go back upstairs. I'm trying to get a little bit of rest. Okay, like I said, I was stranded in this town. Fuck you, it's none of your business. <laughs> so I'm there. I'm trying to get some sleep, but I couldn't because the only thing I could assume was there was, I don't know, a cocaine-fueled satanic ritual involving a goat in the next goddamn room. So 11 o'clock rolls around. I decide, oh, I'm going to, Law and Order's coming on. I want to watch Law and Order and eat some fries and gravy. So I go downstairs. Come on, three minutes. Two more. Okay, so I go downstairs. I'm going to have to watch this in a sense. I go downstairs. This is a true story. I go downstairs. I look at the menu, and for the first time, I realize everything on the menu has the... the uh, the article, the, in front of everything. 
It's the fries, it's the gravy, it's the soup, the salad, the hamburger, the grilled cheese sandwich. It's like they only had one of each. <laughs> so I was like, I want the order of fries on the side of gravy. Fries and gravy? Yeah, the order of fries on the side of gravy. Fries and gravy? Yeah, okay, call it that. She brings me my fries, I look at it, it's fries smothered in gravy. Now this is not what I wanted, it's not what I ordered. When I'm watching law and order, I need to be able to control a fry to gravy factor per individual fry, okay? <laughs> sometimes I want gravy, sometimes I want virgin fucking naked fry. She gave me a great big fucking cheeseless soggy mess. So I was like, no, this is not what I wanted. Take it away. I ordered fries and gravy. I went right off the menu. The order of fries, the side of gravy. So you want your gravy on the side. I want the order of fries on the side of gravy. Fries with gravy on the side. Okay, fucking call it that. She goes into the kitchen. Now he wants the fries and the gravy. Oh, and before that, dude, when she says to me, you, you say yes to fries and gravy. And around here, when people say yes to fries and gravy, that means they want the gravy on the fries. I said, well, I'm glad I didn't order the soup and the salad. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes into the kitchen, she comes back, now he wants the gravy on the side. They bring me my fucking order of fries, I open it up, fries, gravy poured down one side. <laughs> a half a soggy mess. I said, no, this doesn't work. I'll pay for this one. Throw it away. Listen, the gravy is giving you a problem. This is what I want. I want fries with no gravy. Don't know mayo. Can't spell ketchup. Just virgin fries. Bring me that. She goes into the kitchen. No, he doesn't want any gravy at all. Comes back with my fries. I open it up. Yeah, okay, that's what I wanted. Now go get me gravy. <laughs> Don't touch my fries. <laughs> Just go get me some goddamn gravy. How can I get you gravy if you won't give me your fry container? I said, don't you have a little container you can put gravy in that I can dip my fries in while I'm watching Law & Order and eating fries and gravy? She said, I swear to God, hand to God, you know what she said? Those are for mayo! <laughs> I could not get out of that town fast enough, which was a mistake because I got pulled over by some cops. The cop pulled me over, pretty sure it was her fucking brother. And he comes up and goes, you appear scared and nervous, what's your problem? I said, uh, I suffer from cholerophobia. He said, cholerophobia, what's that? I said, a fear of clowns. <laughs> He said, I'm not a clown, I'm an officer. I said, but you're wearing a costume just like a clown. He said, it's not a costume, it's a uniform. I said, isn't the only difference really the number of clowns wearing it? He <laughs> said, do I look like a clown to you? I said, well, yeah, a clown blonde wearing black and seeing red. But my real question is, are you going to let me off with a warning? Bozo. <laughs> Okay, the last part was, wasn't true, the potato part was true, but if you ever get a chance to try that with some cops, try it, let me know what the fuck that works for you. <laughs> Come in, everybody!